it will be uh, uh, this next talk is by uh, Ding Hu from Hanzo Normal University, and he will speak about magnetic quantum criticality in phosphor stove the barium uh, one two two. Uh, Ding, please. Uh, can you hear me clearly? No, I cannot hear you. But maybe it's my problem. Does anybody else uh, hear Ding? We can't hear him. Ding, we don't hear you. Okay. okay. Yeah, I can just barely hear him. Not yet. About the same. Just speak louder. <laughs> I see you. Okay, but uh, there is no voice. It's very quiet. Okay. Um, I can take it a little bit closer. Now it's, it's better. better. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, so I I I start. Second, Maybe you no, can. I think it's you probably have to stay to really close, thing, because we barely hear you. Yeah. Um. Okay now? Much better. better. Sorry? Yeah, it's good. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, Chimel. I think it's, yes, oh, okay. It's my pleasure to give a present, uh, presentation in CCC Senior, and uh, my talk is, is about our recent work on the research of magnetic quantum criticality in the balloon iron arsenic phosphor system. And uh, this work has been done when I was a postdoc in Pengcheng's group in Rice, and uh, and as a scaling fitting and the zero work has been done with Qimiao and uh, Hao Yu in his group, and as a neutron scattering work has been done in Oak Ridge's lab at uh, Ax and uh, HB3 Institute with the help of local contact Sun Xuex, dogs and uh, Travis. And as a sample close and a high temperature transport measurements has been finished in IOP. Firstly, I will introduce the background of forceful stopped system and the motivation of our research quickly. And then I will present our neutron scattering results with the transporters one. And by analyzing the results, we can make some conclusions. As we all know that uh, the T-linear resistivities has been discovered in the couplets such as uh, above TC, such as in LACO system, the T-linear temperature range comes from uh, TC to even 1000 Kelvin, and uh, the linear behavior is incompatible with uh, Landau's Fermi theory and uh, in conventional metal. And, uh, so <clears throat> And concerning the reason of the of this strange resistivities temperature dependence, there is no consensus on the microscopic origin. But uh, in the in the similar compound, uh, the optimal LACO samples in elastic neutron scattering experiment have found that there is omega of T scalings, and it, it points to this to that it may be the magnetic quantum critical point which is responsible for the breakdown of Fermi liquid behavior. And uh, another thing is that uh, the omega of these scaling has, has found in, in another uh, unconventional subject uh, such as hard Fermi's. And not uh, only uh, the information of uh, QCP that can be pointed, it, uh, and uh, the omega of T scaling also provide the dynamical information of spin channels. 
and uh, in the research of iron nectites, lots of works has been carried out, for example, in the cobalt and nickel doped balloon one to two system. They was found that in the near in the optimal doped sample, there is uh, and in the normal state, the so resistance and is linear with the temperature. And uh, let's have a look of the cobalt doped sample. It's around 0 0.6 or 0 0.06. And for the nickel doped one, it's about 10% uh, uh, nickel is doped. 5% uh, nickel is stopped, and the so exponent uh, is uh, becomes 1. And the uh, further experiment to measure the pneumatic susceptibilities in cobalt system uh, point, point, to the, point to the divergence of pneumatic susceptibilities. And uh, it means that maybe in the system, there is a pneumatic QCP. And uh, but uh, uh, and at the same time, MNR's experiment measurement on the nickel doped system it's point two QCPs, and the first one is maybe the magnetic QCP, and the second one is magnetic QCP. But uh, for but uh, in different uh, from the nickel and the cobalt doped system is. Uh, so first of all, doped one to two systems is. Uh, is quite clean because the phosphor stopped is uh, the position of phosphor stopped is in the uh, arsenic position and uh, it will not introduce disorders in the iron plane and by the experiment uh, the quantum oscillations can be observed in the even heavily doped samples and in the resistance and in the resistivity measurement they can find that the steel resistivity is pretty small in the doped samples. And from the resistive, we can see that over a, not only a wide temperature range, but also a wide uh, uh, doping range, say so yes, uh, uh, linear temperature resistivity. And by analyzing this uh, transport result, Masuda's group get us uh, non formulated area in the phase diagram clearly, and we can find it is a V shape of the non formulated area, and the measurement of the penetration depth found there is a peak along the 0 0.3 compound. And, uh, so, and another one is that is the measurement of effective electronic mass found that there is a diverging chance from the overdoped site. Also, NMR's and uh, NMR experiment uh, point to the point to that say maybe a, a magnetic QCP and uh, the elastic resistance measurement point that the phosphor stopped sample maybe say is a pneumatic QCP and uh, both experiment confirming that uh, say is a strong quantum fluctuations in the system both in spin and uh, pneumatic channel, but uh, more information of the dynamic information is needed for us to understand this large quantum radial range found in these systems, I think. And uh, from the ideal pictures of existence of QCP in the phase diagram, the order would be suppressed to zero continuously, and uh, there should be a phase transition at a zero temperature, but uh, for other nectites, there is always subjected in the system and by extensive neutron scattering and X-ray experiment for, for, for the system, we have found that in whole template, in whole doping range, the TS is always coupled with TN and the magnetic order disappears in a weekly first order fashion along the x equals 0 0.3 position and uh, this is different from the ideal picture of QCP and I suggest that maybe there is an unfolded magnetic QCP but uh, this result cannot exclude that as a possibility of uh, extended temperature and energy range where the quantum creative as a quantum creative quality analyzes uh, on the linear resistivities and uh, the result is consistent with uh, the resistivity measurement at the measured and, and the high magnetic field. And uh, we can find that uh, at x equals 0 0.31 compound, 
So resistivity is deviated from T linear behavior below TC and the deviation temperature is much higher when it goes to the overdoped side and from the right picture we can see the boundaries say is a clearly temperature boundaries of non-formulated area so it will provide us to it will provide us a very good system to research, to research the compete of of quantum fluctuations and the thermal fluctuations and the omega alpha t is scaling Scaling research will give us the, the dynamical information of quantum fluctuations. And there is some questions we can answer. We, we want to answer in this first four stop the one to two system. The first one is that is there omega alpha t scalings can be found in the balance in, in the first four balance one to two system. It will give us uh, uh, it will tell us information about the quantum fluctuations. I mean, uh, if if there is uh, omega of this scaling, then then there would be some magnetic quantum fluctuations, and uh, if and if the scaling exists, and uh, what is energy is boundary, and uh, another question is is what is the temperature boundaries of quantum crystal range, and uh, the last one is that we can compare the thermal fluctuations energy scale KBT by or well, with the quantum fluctuations, energy is omega, h bar of omega. And in the quantum crystal range, the KPT should be smaller than the h bar omega. And uh, we have chosen two, two samples in this project. And the first one is surely is optimal doctor sample. And the second one we chose the, on the overdoped side because uh, as uh, a 0.43 sample is have a certain distance between uh, from the optimal one and uh, another one. And uh, another um, goodness is that uh, it will have, uh, it has a no antifloor man magnetic order and uh, it will be easy to analyze its data. Uh, first, uh, we have a look of the resistive result and from the DRTT curve, we can find that the, it, uh, the resistivity is linear down to 30 Kelvin uh, for the optimal doped one, and it is consistent with previous result. But uh, for the overdoped 0 0.43 sample, we can find that the deviation happens at 90 Kelvin. It's almost three times larger than the optimal doped sample. And uh, for the high temperature part, we can find that in both in both compound, uh, the linear uh, the deviation of the from the linear yes happens around 400 Kelvin, and uh, yes, and uh, so we can determine the uh, determine the temperature of the of, of the quantum crystal region. It's about from it's below 400 Kelvin. And for the neutron scattering experiment, and uh, we can find the signals around the antifly mag magnetic order wave factor. It's a half half in, in plane, and uh, we can find the signal is, appears around this position. And uh, by the 2D Gaussian functions, we can fit, fit the results and get the peaks intensity just at the QAF. And uh, with the increase of energy, we can find that the signals center along the QAF is first larger and larger in both compounds. And these results are consistent with previous results. And it is worth to know to mention that above 100 MeV, the spin excitations will separate to two parts and involve two, two different. So we only choose uh, signals below 100 MeV. And after we get the energy dependence of chi tau pi, we can fit it with typical pilot magnetic relaxation pole and the gamma point to the four ways, four ways that have maximum of the spin excitations and intensity is intensity of excitations. 
So observation of relaxation form in spin excitation in these two compounds means that these materials are in paramagnetic states. To test if there is omega alpha scalings, we fitted this data by by this by this by this simple functions, and uh, and the uh, so scaling exponent alpha and the scaling functions are determined by the best observed of the graphs of the data points on a universal curve, and uh, in previous, and uh, we excluded. And we excluded the data points below TEC and lower than 12, uh, 20 MeV because it may be uh, some infections from the spin resonance and the spin gap. We can find that uh, when alpha equals 0 0.605, the fitting is based and uh, it, and it uh, answers questions that uh, in this system there is omega of the scalings. And we found that the, the fitting range is large. It's from the omega over T range is from 1.1 .1 to 110. And for the low energy parts, it seems that some some points and from the curve, uh, deviate from the curve. And we carried out Chebex's measurement and normalized the data. And we found that the cut of energy of omega over T scalings is 10 MeV. Below 10 MeV, so below below 10 MeV, uh, so data will not follow omega of T scalings anymore. And uh, if for the omega of T scalings found in found in the in the optimal sample is connected to the magnetic quantum fluctuations, it we would expect it that the sense scalings is obeyed in the overdoped sample. So. So we can find that uh, in the high energy data, the so omega of this scaling is did obey the with alpha equals also 0 0.605. But for the low energy part, it will it fails to obey. And uh, we found that the energy is cut off is around 30 MeV with some alpha. So we can find that uh, in the quantum crater range, quantum fluctuations is competed with, uh, with thermal fluctuations. And, and we can determine the, and we can fix the uh, roughly, roughly energy scale. And for the, and from the resistivity measurement, we can find that for the optimal dropped sample, the deviation temperature is around 30 Kelvin. And for the overdoped sample, it's 90 Kelvin. And uh, and from the omega of the scaling, the so energy is cut off is 10 MeV, and uh, for the orbit of the sample, it's 30 MeV. And we can find it easily that they are proportional. Uh, there is a, a proportional relationship because uh, between these two energy scales, and the ratio of these two energy scales is about pi. And uh, h bar omega is indeed larger than the KBT. And I think. Uh, and we think we think that this factor, this pi is important to future zero works to understand the quantum criticalities. And uh, to comp uh, and it is worth to compare it, uh, uh, and it is worth to mention <clears throat> and compare it, our results with our systems with disorders, and uh, in the. In the plating dot uh, European couple systems, there is also omega of T scalings and the T linear resistivity uh, results, but uh, the quantum, but it is still unclear that the quantum criticality of long range the magnetic order or the localized uh, moment in a disordered setting is responsible for the behavior. And the same situation happens in the cobalt of the balloon one to two system. Uh, there is also omega of T scalings, but there is a short range antipolar magnetic not uh, antipolar magnetic order appears uh, be uh, before it appears. So it is also unclear that uh, it is antipolar magnetic QCP or spin glass QCP. And it is also worth to mention that uh, in the pillar uh, uh, 
playback report of the cobalt dubbed uh, phosphorus dubbed balloon one to two systems is omega alpha T is scaling, but uh, we need to know that the uh, this energy range of these omega alpha T scalings is just uh, uh, below 10 NeV. And uh, in our research, we found that below 10 NeV, there is no omega alpha T scaling. So it's maybe from the disorder induced by the chlorine impurity, uh, chlorine dot. Okay, I think uh, it's time to make some conclusions is that we can find a uh, a uh, universal omega of these scalings in in the phosphor stop the balloon one to two system and at the boundaries of the quantum greater range. Uh, we found that the low energy uh, the low temperatures of T linear resistivities scales with the low energy boundaries of omega T scalings by a factor of pi. And uh, the dynamic information is from the <coughs> from the spin channels founded in the omega of these scalings were linked to the T linear resistivities. And another thing, and the last thing is that the upper temperature limit of quantum gradual range in the in these systems is around 400 Kelvin. Okay. Okay, uh, thank you very much, you. Uh, Dean, uh, for a very nice talk. Any questions, Tommy? Uh, Jung Hao, please. Yeah, so very beautiful work. Um, so I have questions. Um, so you sh um, you show some data of the carbon dot, and then you say that it's also showing an omega T scaling. So I wonder how, you know, for example, like how cobalt dope or nickel dope look like, and then do they also show omega T scalings, and do they have a, for example, like a different low temperature cutoff um, compared to the optimum dope phosphorus? Um, uh, I uh, as I know, I think there is no reports of the of the nickel or cobalt dot, and uh, I I remember that uh, in our in our group they maybe done some research on the nickel dot uh, by the one to two system, and uh, they failed to find the omega of this scaling. I think. So you mean for the entire range, or or uh, it's just failed uh, uh, below certain temperature? Uh, I don't know the details, but uh, they didn't have report us. Uh, yeah, the data. I, I mean, the, the data wasn't good enough. I mean, the, with the range and stuff wasn't wasn't sufficient to to conclude. I see. Yeah. So, so the reason why I'm asking this is because um, in the elasticity measurements of the pneumatic sensibility, you know, the difference between the cobalt dope and phosphorus dope is that for the cobalt dope, you know, below certain temperature range, you will start to see some deviations from the pu uh, perfect curve vice. So I mean, one, one simple explanation is that the disorder you know, give you a low energy cutoff yeah, of yeah. Um, this behavior. So just wonder if we can you know, <laughs> compare notes in the cobalt of case and then the phosphorus dope case um, in this and then seeing the same kind of cutoff. Yeah, but phosphorus dope, they seem to be much more, much more robust. Right. Uh, yes, and another thing is that for the omega of these scaling fact is that uh, uh, the low energy, uh, the low energy range may be yes, indeed affected by the disorder. So for the nickel dot, uh, maybe the maybe the energy range will be limited. But uh, for the high energy part, I would yes, don't know. Right, but but. Um... Looks like you said that there's a previous publication on carbon dope, right? I think we also have some data for the carbon dope, so maybe we can go look at that and then mm -hmm. make a comparison. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments to Ding's talk? Um, Actually, maybe just to turn around, maybe I have a, just in a spirit of discussion, a question for Joe Hao. So uh, how, if you, for the phosphorus dope the case, if you get really close to 0.3 or whatever that critical concentration is, uh, do you still see QEYs or is it, is there any sign that the temperature dependence of the, uh, Elasto resistance, the, the pneumatic susceptibility extracted from elasto resistance is deviating from one of the T behavior. 
well, I think uh, you're, you're just, we're, we're all looking at the data right now, right? Uh, in this slide, mm -hmm. the panel A, mm -hmm. uh, there seems to be a very uh, good agreement with the Q-Revise, at least all the mm -hmm. way down to TC. Um, we don't know what happens below the TC. You know, we have some preliminary high, high field measurements, but um, it's not conclusive yet. Um, right, and then we also have some fine doping dependence around this range. Um, what we can say is that um, as you go slightly towards underdope, um, there is some uh, very uh, dramatic uh, change of the behavior, mm. um, you know, deviating from Q-revised. So it's not a very simple fin-like um, behavior um, you know, that, that, that you typically expect for a quantum critical fin. Mm -hmm. And you no, know, it's it might to do with this uh, first order nature. And then um, I guess, uh, you know, a similar question that I can also you know, ask Peng Chen and you is that uh, now given that we know the faster stop do have a first order like um, quantum phase transition, how does that impact this uh, omega t scaling and then all this understanding? So low, to low energy power means it does not apply anymore, right? Because there's really no omega t scaling and, and, and below, like Ding was saying, right? Below below 10 and 30 millivolts or whatever, you know, yeah. I see. So that's why there's that. a small, there's, that's why there's a cutoff uh, temperature and energy scale uh, it's at also, low energies. Yeah, it's also consistent with uh, with uh, Jim analytics data, right? Where we, when he eliminates superconductivity, the linear deviation become quad become quadratic, right? At low temperature. I mean, the linear does not extend to to yeah. The linear does not extend to zero zero temperature if you eliminate superconductivity. Mm -hmm. So, so it seems to me that if I combine the inelastic neutron data and uh, the uh, elastic resistance data, uh, one gets a picture that in temperature going from 30 Kelvin all the way to say something on the order of room temperature. So a decade of temperature and uh, uh, something like a decade of frequency, although you know, in the dynamical measurement, one would like to go beyond 60 milli Electron volts, uh, uh, if uh, if that can be done. So 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 there's a decade of temperature and frequency over which it, it seems like uh, it's not affected by the first order nature of the ultimate phase transition, and uh, presumably the effect of this order is very weak in this system at least. And so there's an in inherent omega of T scaling, and, and that leads to questions like. How can one understand the exponents, both in the spin response and in the pneumatic uh, criticality in the pneumatic channel, right? Uh, and, and in fact, in the spirit of discussion, we actually thought about uh, recently how to uh, extract the information of dynamical uh, fluctuations in the pneumatic channel. And it turns out that uh, if one measures like what Penchin does, the, um, the difference of the pi zero spin uh, fluctuation sp uh, spectrum and the zero pi spin fluctuation spectrum in the presence of a small external stress, uh, you can use that information to get it's essentially a linear response. And from that, you can get the dynamical pneumatic susceptibility out of that. So, uh, that giving all the uh, spectroscopy uh, people uh, in 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 uh, here in the mix, uh, it would I, I would uh, uh, be delighted if uh, somebody could uh, really give it a systematic study of that. So I think maybe uh, if there's since there's no further questions comments, let's uh, thank uh, Dean uh, once again for a nice talk. And let's uh, move on to next talk, which will be given by Yu Song. I understand Yu is uh, under the transition from UC Berkeley to Zhejiang University. Oh, okay, all right. So you, are you seeing my screen? Uh, th thank you, Jimiao. Uh, we see a sc your screen, yes, but not the slides. Yes, so, so this is, okay, right. are, you, are, you seeing, are you seeing the uh, the slides right now? Yes, uh, we do. Okay, great, great, wonderful. All right, yes, so um, maybe you let me just introduce you further. Uh, 